Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Goosebumps Horror Town playthrough, where we'll be taking a look at the review for the event 10, entitled The Horrorland Carnival. This was this year's 2019 Halloween update, and if you've seen my three-part playthrough, plus other videos, you probably already know that, and probably already seen it, and you might have already guessed what my full opinions are with this claim. I'm also happy that people liked the way I kind of designed the last review and I'm hoping to improve them moving forward but uh, well we'll have to wait and see but this won't be no different so before we go into the goods and bads let's take a brief uh, description of what this event story is all about Halloween has come to Horror Town and a carnival has arrived to celebrate with it brings the world's most infamous horror theme park, Horrorland. Its ringleader, Jonathan Schiller, was actually a past resident who lived in this town, but most people won't know because he's been hidden in his house for most of his life. So, why is he here? What brings him into this town? Why is he buying stuff for his shop? And will Eric survive this Halloween? Or will Lucy drag him into his doom. Welcome to the Horrorland Carnival. This event is interesting because it is the second Halloween event in this game and it's a carnival like theme. Well, kinda, it's mostly with Horrorland elements, but whatever. The Halloween content from last year has made their returns with new items based off of the Horrorland series. During this time, they also added the new search character function to this game, which is great. And the event started back on October 23rd and ended November 10th at 7 p.m. Eastern. I incorrectly stated it was 8, but I forgot. Alright, daylight saving starts. My bad. So, what's the deal with the Horrorland Carnival? Is it a fun and exciting Halloween themed carnival made for everyone to enjoy the holiday treats? Or is it a dirty trick played by Chiller who would only want to terrorize the town and make you stay in the carnival forever? Well, we're about to find out, aren't we? Let's take a look at what made this event so good, shall we? The final prize this time around was actually more achievable compared to the last events we've had. The way this worked was that you only had the event scene spawn producing the golden tickets in this case and it was the only thing you had so you could only focus on that it didn't need it for crafting other future items so you can only focus in on just the costumes being the hard part and then everything else is easy. You could probably tell during my crafting 101 how ridiculously easy this could have been and for most part I think a lot of people were able to get the reward just fine. Orlan. Uh, hard to go wrong with that place. Well, <laughs> ironically enough, Horrorland is such an iconic place and ha you know, Goosebumps Horror Town, it's kind of built off of Horrorland in a sense. But yeah, we it's nice to see we get a little bit of a taste of this iconic story and area that is known within the Goosebumps lore. A lot of characters this time around seem to be better handled when it comes to being useful for this event. More specifically, Mr. Fleshman this time. I was surprised to see how all his quest actually was all benefit to get items for this event. But a lot of characters, even if they weren't dropping items for this event, they were able to be used to craft or help craft items for the event's uh, grand prize. Jonathan Chillers as a new character, his story and animations were really enjoyable. I love how they got this guy into the game. I love how he kind of followed through the original story with him. I love the little animations, his cool dancing and his playing with his figures and all that stuff. It's it's a nice little detail. You get the you get you get to really feel this guy's personality and how he was such a closeted kind of individual.
And I might as well bring this up, but allowing the old Halloween content to come back and be useful as well. So it's not just like, oh, here's some past content update, but now they can also help you within the event. That was a nice little feature. You got to see these monsters come back, and if you had them from last year, they will be able to assist you with getting more of the items. So they're not like you need to get them in order to buy into them. Besides one, which I'll mention, but the most part, this seems to be pretty decent for everything. Now the only exception to this one would be that of Red Pharmacies. It's nice that they actually allowed Red Pharmacies to come back into this game. However, the fact that you needed Walter into this, it kind of was probably the only downfall for this uh, getting the items because the drop rates were kind of iffy. But, I mean, if you had Walter and this, then it maybe is not that terrible, but it's still one of the weakest parts. But... It's, it's up in the air. Right, let's talk about what made this event kind of bad, shall we? Like the previous updates before, the event felt short, and I feel like this was basically in the main campaign. It felt like the, like the story had an ending, yes, but it didn't have a satisfying conclusion unlike other previous ones before it. Because of that, that kind of made this whole thing felt weird. It also was weird to how every time you beat in a main quest line that they pop up and will say like, Oh, congratulations, you beat the thing. Despite that not being the case. And this might be me, but I feel like there were content that was originally supposed to be in this game but wasn't. A key factor of that is Zine Quinn, available for tickets but yet yeah, not in the, in the shop. And what's weird about that too is that we didn't get Carly Beth back, which is a very iconic character, especially for Halloween. I don't know, I, I felt like maybe there was a good opportunity to have her come back permanently, but that's just wishful thinking at this point. Now, this is not so much for older players or players who've been here for a while, but if you're a new player, these were kind of pricey in order to get some of these items. Some of it also requires premium characters and items in order to actually get a good leg up into this race. I didn't see a lot of complaining when it came to something like this, but it was something I noticed because of how much content was available last year, and especially with the amount of... Uh, time we got which was like three weeks it was a lot longer than the last one but I'm not sure if people who are new to the game would be able to get all the items in time so that was there to keep to my point with the prices being a little bit iffy the pawn shop again I got I saw a lot of complaints talking about how hard it was to get these tickets uh, for all these newer Horland items Mind you, I was able to get everything at the end of the day, but I will say that the prices for them were kind of hard to obtain. And I think one of the biggest problems with this is that there should be some option to be able to get the tickets, or in this case, the event currency available, at least one spot of it available to be able to buy into. It's probably a feature she should look into because of the fact that it's annoying to have to sit there for every two, three minutes and just refresh it because the there was no item that's being needed that drops the event currency required. Although this event was a lot easier to get done, especially with how the past events has been, it went by a little bit too quickly than most, and it felt like nothing was left to be done once everything was accomplished. I'm not sure if this, like again, compared to what we had the option way, this is not a bad negative. This is a, this is a better negative than the one we got before, which was it was too hard. I'd rather take too easy than too hard at this point because I don't want I don't want to go back into that uh, ne negative feeling again back in August. That's a ho ho. But yeah, it, it uh, a little bit easy, but maybe next time uh, we can maybe alter it a bit to make it a little bit more in the in the Goldilocks area.
So, that was the it for complaints and reviews. This was the title card at the end of the day here showing you. And I just want to point this out because I did, someone did point this out to me. I have made aware I made some boo-boos when it comes to some of the dialogue I have in these cards. I ended up mispronouncing or, not mispronouncing, but bad grammar and spelling. So it looks kind of unprofessional, as it were to say. And moving forward after this uh, event, I am going to make these cards a lot more better um, read through, proofread, and all that stuff so that we don't get situations like this anymore. But uh, yeah, that was a big boo-boo on my part. So, after looking at this, I had to look and think... Where would this place, honestly, in my opinion, where would this be placed in the event overall? And while well, looking at it, I kind of debated, I kind of talked within the community and did my uh, survey. And I kind of came back to a conclusion where I feel like this was appropriate to put it here. So, overall... My honest opinion to this event is that it is this as you can see it's snugging right between underneath the Valentine's Day event but above the Easter Bunny event that we had this year making this one land in third place so why did I pick it in third place well it's not as great of length wise compared to that of Valentine's Day night as well as the fact that how they kind of handled everything felt like a little bit more better compared to this one felt a little bit easy and could have been more I guess it was just living up to that of the Halloween update which is gonna be hard to kind of top but at the same time I felt like the way they kind of handled getting the items all that stuff it was less like less cluttered and crazy compared to what we had during the Easter Bunny event so that's where it lies because it was better than that one but not so good about that one so i felt like third place was a good spot for it and uh yeah that was my conclusion to that one there and before i go i did want to mention this one thing this was not a negative or a positive or a, a metal thing i just want to point this out although the monument was nice as i as i said during my playthrough uh, a lot of people, myself included, were surprised how small it was. We were looking at it and going like, oh, it's like this big mountain thing. But no, it's like, a, it's like a little sign thing there. I guess they were trying to make it look like that of the iconic book sign. But it, it kind of looked like this instead. So, yeah, it's, it's what it is, unfortunately. But, you know. <laughs> Oh boy, well, that was a fun Halloween, wasn't it? Uh, hopefully you enjoyed that Halloween update. Uh, if you did went trick-or-treating, it would be interesting to know how that how that went for you. Did you get a lot of candy? Uh, was it anything like that? I'm not too sure. What I will tell you is that during Halloween, when this happened with us up here, Halloween has this weird tradition thing where it always feels like it's it's the events leading up to the day, not so much the day itself. Because it's like waiting for a firework to kind of pop, but it's either going to be a dud or it's going to be like a big spectacular thing. And what's weird is up in Canada, I don't know why this is, but it's like it always is like a rainy kind of crappy uh, mood for Halloween. Like it's like it's appropriately feeling like it's Halloween. And as soon as Halloween night ends, it's like it just turns into snow. Like, it's just like, oh, Halloween's done, Christmas, hooray. Like, and, and that sucks because after Halloween is done, Christmas is the only thing we look up to up here. Whereas the people in the States, they have Thanksgiving and, and Black Friday. Oh, oh, Black Friday. That's a, that's another true story in another time. Uh, but yeah, that at the end of the day, this is the whole thing. Uh, overall... The Halloween update this year, I felt like it was a nice kind of refresher compared to the last two updates we gotten. And yeah, it was pretty short, but at the same time, a lot of people weren't complaining about it. People were happy with it. So that's a, that's a good plus. And the fact that it's in third place shows you they did pretty good.
despite the uh, minor flaws with the update. So yeah, that's it from me. I will like to see what you think of this review. Do you agree with me? Do you think I'm wrong? Let me know down below by either liking or commenting. And if uh, you've been watching me for a while and have not already, maybe subscribe. You might find more videos in the future and other content, so that might keep you busy for a while. <laughs> Until then, uh, whatever Horrorland brings for us will be interesting. Uh, next part to this might be the current one we're dealing with in November, but I'm not 100% too sure. I like to wait for the events to be done before I can move on. What I will tell you is that I have some stuff in the backlog to kind of get done. I have to get a review, not a review, but I have to get some of the past missed content update uploaded. So uh, event character or the characters that we've missed, uh, I have to do a thing overall and uh, some ideas I have for the end of the year. But uh, we'll look into that when it comes to it. But until then... Thanks for watching. Let me know. Blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. I'll be seeing you next time to whatever Horrorland may bring us. I mean Horror Town. <laughs> Horrorland is still kept with us in our hearts, despite no horrors left behind. But, you know, rambling on at this point. Thanks for watching. I'll be seeing you next time for whatever Horror Town may bring to us. Until then, goodbye. <laughs>